So today I'm going to be doing a video on how to make a money clip wallet. This is what a finished one will look like. It will just open up, a money clip will go in the center, and then it will have two pockets for cards. Uh, so how to cut it out, it's going to be three and a quarter inches here on the edges, and then it will be eight and three quarters long. So I'm just going to get that drawn out on here. I'm just using some four to five ounce tooling leather. Uh, that's what I do for all the backs of my wallet, so I'll get that cut out and then I'll get back. So I got the back of the wallet drawn out and I've gone through and I've double checked that all the sides are the right length that they need to be. So now I'm just gonna cut it out and then whenever I'm cutting leather, I always use an X-Acto blade and it's always important to keep a sharp blade on it because once it gets dull, it's really hard to cut it. And I just buy a bunch of replacement blades because they get dull pretty quick. So I'm gonna go through and get this cut out. Now I got it cut out. I went through and I found the center of the wallet. And so because it was eight and three quarters, the center of it would be four and three eighths. And then I took a ruler and I marked half inch away from the center on each side so that I'll have one inch in the middle that won't be tooled. And now I'm going to take my wing divider. I'm gonna set it to a quarter of an inch. And then I'll take that and then I will mark all the way around on the edges and I won't and I won't take the wing divider through this middle part. I'll only do it around these three corners. And what this will do is it'll just give me a border that I'll keep my tooling within. So I'll go through and do that on both sides. I got my border on it and now I'm able to go through and make a design. A quick note before I go ahead and get drawing. The reason that you want to do a quarter of an inch border is that it gives you a, like a side to go up against when you're drawing and then it also leaves enough room so that you can get stitches in between when you go to stitch the wallet. So I've got the wallet drawn out now, so I'm gonna get it ready to tool. And the way that I do this is I'll just take a spray bottle full of water and then I'll just spray down the front and the back of it. Back sprayed. I'll just take a Ziploc bag and just put it inside and close it down. and then just let this sit for like an hour or two and just let the water soak into the leather. All right, so I've let it sit in the bag for a little bit and have the water soak into the leather. So now I'll be able to take it out of the bag and tool it. And the way that I get it ready to tool is I just take some blue painter's tape and I'll tape the back of it When I tape it, I'll do like two layers of tape. And what the tape does is it prevents the leather from being stretched because as you're hitting it with tools, it 
it spreads out the leather so this is just hold the back of it so that it doesn't get too stretched out and then now that I got it taped I will take my water bottle again and I'll just do one light co color coating of water and that'll just make it softer so it'll be easier to use a swivel knife and then from there I'll just go through and run over with a swivel I can't speak swivel knife and then tool it Alright, so I've got the back tooled out and then I let it sit for a couple hours just so that it's the leather's completely dry when you go through to dye it. And then I'll just take some paint brushes. I have a small one to get in the tighter spots and then just a bigger one to cover like a bigger areas like the middle here. And then I'm just using Fibbing's Pro Dye to dye it. So I'll go through and get this dyed. I got it dyed, I will give it an hour or so before putting some oil on it. After giving the dye an hour or two to soak in and dry, uh, the next step will be putting some oil on. I just use Fibbing's Meats Foot Oil. And then I take synthetic sheep skin and then just put some oil onto that. And then just start in the middle of the project and then just rub in the oil make sure to cover cover it evenly all right and then i'll give that about an hour or two to soak in and then if i want it to be lighter after that hour then I'll go ahead and repeat the same thing until I have about the color that I want. All right, I've given, given the oil some time to soak in, so the next step will to be put resist on it before antiquing it. And then, so the way I put this on is I just take a sponge like this and I just lightly spray it with water, just enough to get a little bit on it. And then pour some Pro Resist onto it. And then you just want to make sure that it's even like this. There's not a glob on it or anything. And then just like the oil, you start in the middle and you just rub it on so that it's applied evenly. Yeah, put a little bit more on the other side. And you just want to put a little bit on. You don't want to, you don't want to soak it or anything. And then once you got an even coat along the whole thing, then you'll just give that about like 20 minutes or so to dry. And then if you use a sponge like this, you're going to want to make sure to run it under a sink and clean it out right away. Otherwise, it'll dry in the sponge and wreck it. Right, so after giving the Pro resist like 20 or so minutes to dry out completely. Now it's time to put on the antique. So I just use black fibbing's antique paste and then to put it on, I just put a rubber glove on. So you just take a little bit out with your finger and then just start rubbing it on. Make sure to fill the whole thing and then be sure to get it in all the indents. Yeah, 
salle. Right. And then you can just let that sit. Um, you, might, you might need to play around and find out what works best for you, but I, I leave it on for about like 10, maybe 15 minutes, and then I'll just take a paper towel and wipe it off. And then after wiping the majority of it off, I'll let it sit again for maybe an hour or so just to get the parts that are in the indent completely dry before putting tan coat on. So I'll let it dry for 10, 15 minutes and then come back. All right, so I let it sit for like 15 minutes. Now I'm gonna grab some paper towels. And then I just fold them up like this and then just start wiping it off. And all you're really looking for is to basically just get it off the top of your tooling and then leave it in the indents. So you don't want to press down too hard, but just kind of take it off the top. All right. So there's still a little bit on the top, but that'll be taken off when you get the tan coat. So. So I'm gonna let this sit for about an hour and let the what's in the indents dry up a little bit and then I'll come back to put tan coat on. All right, so I gave the antique some time to dry. Now we're gonna put tan coat on and this will be a very similar process to putting the process on. Just take another sponge. This time, keep the sponge dry instead of getting it damp. And then just put it on the exact same way. and just spread it evenly. All right, and then just like the Pro Resist, give that another 20 minutes to dry. Once the tan coat's dry, the last thing I'll do is spray some saddle lac on it. Uh, this'll just basically put one last layer over to seal it. So all you do is just get an even coat over it. Like this, you wanna make sure that there's no like buildup anywhere. And then if you want, you can take a blow dryer to speed up the drying process or just let it sit. It dries pretty quick. So I'll let that dry and then I'll repeat. I'll spray it again, so I'll do two two coats of the Sadillac and then after that we can get the insides built and sew it together. Now I got the back of the wall completely finished and colored and everything's dry so the next step will be to build the interiors for the wallet. So the first thing that you want to do is get a backing or a liner for the inside of the wallet and it'll just go on the inside of this. So how I do that is I'll just lay it down and take a pencil and just roughly draw along the outside of it just so that you have some room on the outside because you don't want to go right up against just to play it safe. 
And then take the X-Acto knife and just cut that out. So now you're going to take some contact cement and glue these down. Uh, I'm going to move all this leather out of the way just so I don't get some glue on it. So, so I moved the leather out of the way and then I just put down a paper towel so that I don't get it on the cutting board or the glue on the cutting board. And then you're just going to glue these two pieces together so that the leather so that the insides are together. And then when you're gluing them together, you wanna to make sure that you don't get glue in the middle of the wallet, just because that's where the money clip is gonna go. So you don't wanna, it'd be pretty hard to get the money clip in there if it's glued together. So I'm just gonna go ahead and glue these together. Now that I got the glue on, I can just glue them down together. Alright, and then I'll just keep pressure on that for a minute or two so that it can dry all the way. I got the liner glued on. And when you're gluing it, you really want to make sure that you're putting glue around the edges so that when you put it on, the edges will stick down. And that way, when you go to cut off this excess amount of leather, it'll you'll get a clean cut and it won't be folding off and everything. And then I just put a new blade on my X-Acto knife. That way it makes it really easy just to cut it off and you know not have any mess ups. So. Once you have it glued on, then I'll just cut off this extra leather that's on there. So the liner's glued in and, and got it cut out to fit the shape. So now you'll be able to go in and add the two, measure and cut out the two pockets for it. All right, so just like I did with the liners, I'm going to just kind of cut out the rough amount of leather that I'd need to make the pockets. And then this way that it, That way I'd be able to 
just cut out this little piece of leather and then get rid of all this and it'll just make it easier to measure and cut and try that out instead of trying to measure it on the whole piece of leather. So. So now I can get this out of the way. And now we can just make the pockets out of these. Alright, so to make the pockets, what I'll do is now that I got it cut out, I can measure it. And even though you tape the back of it when you tool it, it'll stretch out a tiny bit. So you don't want to make the pockets before you have this tooled, just so that I'm able to double check that what the actual width of it is. So I cut the back to three and a quarter, and now it's slightly over three and a quarter. So go through and Get my line drawn on here. All right. And then you have to decide how far up you want the pocket to go. Um, on this wallet, I just did like two and a half inches. That should work pretty well, just so it, it's tall enough so that it fit the card in it. So you put the card in, yeah, so two and a half would bring it to about here. So, so it'll be three and a little bit over a quarter, and then two and a half inches tall. I'm not too good at measuring out right angles. So I'm just gonna make sure that everything is the length that I need it. So that'll be our pocket. And then what I do on mine is I'll just do like a, just kind of have it come in like, and dip down like that so it'd look like, like this. So I'm gonna go through and measure that out, but you can do whatever design you'd like on the, on the pockets. Alright, so I got the pocket drawn out. Uh, I just found like the center of it, and then that's where the lowest point will be, and just measured it out so that it's, they're both equal curves. And then now I'll just cut it out, and I'll start with the top. And the top you want to cut like right on your line. But then with the sides and the bottom, you're gonna wanna cut just to the outside. And what that'll do is when you go to stitch it on, it'll leave a little bit of extra room because whenever you're cutting something out and sewing it, you, you 
it's better to have too much than too little. So I'll just cut it out right, right on the outside of it. All right, so here's the first pocket. So just going like that. So I'll go through and do the same thing for the other pocket and then we'll come back to get it put together. All right, I got the pockets cut out. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and glue them on to the wallet. And then, so to do that, you just put a little bit around the edges of here and then on the edges of the wallet. And then slip them on. And then once you have them glued on, I'll just take like a clip like this. So let go on. And then to hold the glue, just clip it on like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and get those glued and then we'll be ready to stitch. So I've got it all glued down, pull the pockets in, so I'm just going to go through and stitch it. I got it all stitched together. You just do all the way around the whole border. Um, now I can just go through and take the extra leather off that's on there, hanging out the sides. It might be kind of difficult to cut it with the if there's any glue on the outside, but. And just be careful not to cut yourself, of course. <laughs> Get that cut and now you can just go through the edge it. So just grab that. Right. So the first step for edging would just be uh, take an edger and run it along. Edge. And this will just round it off. So you round it off so it can fit the burnisher better. Oh, 
So now that's been edged. I'll just take one of these block sandpaper and you just go along and smooth out the edges. Make sure they're both even length. It shouldn't take a whole lot to get it. You just want to get it smooth. And then you can just take the dust and wipe it into a garbage can. All right. And then I have a sponge that I dedicate just to edging. Um, I, use, I used to dye I used to dye the edges and then burnish them, so that's why this is black, but I don't do that anymore. So now I edge it and then I dye them. So you just take the sponge and spray it a little bit. And then just get it, you don't want to get soaked, just kind of get it a little wet. And then take the beeswax and just rub it over like three to three or four times maybe and then take the burnisher you just use friction to get it to smooth it out So now that I got those burnished, I will take Fibbing's Edge Coat. And then I, instead of using the dye, I use the Edge Coat. Some Q-tips to put it on. can't really use a brush for this um, it's kind of hard to describe but it's a lot thicker so I'll just dip the q-tip in it and then rub this on
So I'm gonna let that dry, and then with this I usually do two coats. When this dries, it'll kind of harden up a little bit, and that'll help keep the edges smooth. Um, when I first got the edge coat, I used I used just like a dauber like this, but because it's it hardens when it dries, you can't really reuse them. So I just decided to get some Q-tips and that, that works a lot better for putting it on. So I'm gonna let that dry and then do a second coat and then we'll be able to put the clip in. So the edges have dried and now I'm able to cut the slits in to put the money clip in. Uh, I just use these, uh, I get them, you can get them in like a pack of five, I think it is off Amazon. I'll try to find a link to put in the description, but basically you just cut a slit and you want to do like instead of pushing down and trying to cut through the whole thing you just kind of do multiple so that you don't go too deep and cut through the back of it so So once you get that one in, you do another slit on the bottom side. Because if you if you were to just leave it how it is now, you'd have it sticking out a bunch on the one side. So what you want to do is cut a slit over here. Got it in, so that's how I'll put the cash in there, and then cards on the sides. So once I get everything put together, I'll take my sheepskin that I used to oil, and I'll put just a little bit of oil on it. And then I'll just oil the insides of the wallet just to darken it up a little bit. Makes it look a little better. And then let that sit for a little bit and let it dry out. Let the oil dry. I'll just take a rubber band like this, close the wallet, and then just put it around like that. I can do one over here too. And this will just kind of help form the wallet close so that when you set it down, it doesn't just fling open like that. So that this just helps with that. So yeah, here's my tutorial on how to do a money clip wallet. I hope that helped you. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. So yeah, thanks for watching.